Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at blood pressure. Now, blood pressure is the force that the blood places on the walls of our vessels. And it's important for you to understand because one in four people globally have chronically elevated blood pressure. That means the force that's being placed on the walls of their vessels is chronically high. And that can lead to damage over time, resulting in vascular disease, which is one of the biggest killers worldwide. So we need to understand blood pressure in order to treat it. And blood pressure can be easily outlined via this very simple equation. Blood pressure, which is BP, equals cardiac output, CO, times systemic vascular resistance, also known as total peripheral resistance. And it's a simple equation, right? In simple equations, if I were to increase any of these two values here, you're gonna increase blood pressure. If I decrease one or either of these two values, I'm gonna decrease blood pressure. So what are we looking at here? What's cardiac output? Cardiac output simply is how much blood is ejected from your ventricles per minute, right? Every minute, how much blood gets squirted out of your ventricles. It has its own really simple equation. Cardiac output is heart rate, heart rate times stroke volume, stroke volume. So we can write those down like we do here. We can write HR for heart rate and stroke volume as SV. Heart rate is how many beats does your heart have per minute? So how many beats per minute? That's heart rate. So let's write that down. Beats per minute. Beats per minute. That's your heart rate. Stroke volume is how much blood is ejected with every beat. So we've got our left atrium, left ventricle and aorta. That fills up with blood and it beats. Blood gets squirted out of the aorta, relax, beat, squirt out. And it's constantly beating, right? Now, every time it beats, how much blood gets squirted out of this left ventricle? That's what we're talking about here. So it is the volume ejected every beat. So let's take a look. On average, heart rate is 70 beats per minute. On average, the volume that we eject with every beat is around about 70 milliliters. And again, it's a multiplication. 70 times 70 is 4.9 liters, which is around about five liters. So what we can say is on average, our cardiac output, the amount of blood our heart pumps out every minute is five liters. Now, because of this simple equation, if I were to increase that five liters to six liters or seven liters, cardiac output's going up. That means blood pressure goes up. If I drop that five liters down to four liters or three liters, cardiac output goes down, blood pressure also goes down. So how can we affect heart rate and change it? How can we affect stroke volume and change it? All right, first thing is the autonomic nervous system, our sympathetic nervous system. That's the fight or flight response. This gets triggered when we are scared, the release of adrenaline and noradrenaline. It's going to stimulate the heart, the SA node, the AV node, for example, and it's going to increase heart rate. So the sympathetic nervous system increases heart rate, increases cardiac output, increasing blood pressure. The parasympathetic nervous system, this is our rest and digest. It gets activated when we are resting and eating, for example, and it's mediated by the vagus nerve, the 10th cranial nerve. It will travel to the heart and when stimulated, tells the heart rate to slow down. The parasympathetic nerve slows heart rate down, dropping cardiac output, dropping blood pressure. Hopefully that makes sense, all right? So that's heart rate. What about stroke volume? The amount of blood that we eject every beat. Well, this is a volume issue, right? So, well, not an issue, but it is looking at volume specifically. So how can we affect this volume? All right, first thing is, we need to look at the filling of that heart, the filling of the ventricle. Then we need to have a look at the contraction of the ventricle. Then we need to have a look at the ejection of the blood out of the ventricle. They're the three factors. So the first being the filling of the heart, this is what we call preload. 
preload. Now preload specifically is referring to when we fill the heart or the ventricle with blood, the moment in which that ventricle is maximally filled with blood just before contraction, the stretch that that blood places on the walls of the myocardium, on the walls of the heart, that's preload. So preload is the stretch placed on the walls of the ventricle immediately preceding contraction. That's important. Why? Because the more you fill the heart, the, so the greater the preload, the more you stretch the heart. And here's the thing, there's something called the Frank Starling mechanism. The more you stretch the heart, the stronger the contraction of the heart. And the stronger the contraction, the more blood gets pumped out, meaning the greater the stroke volume. So if you increase preload, you're increasing the filling of the heart and the stretching, increasing stroke volume. Increase preload, increase stroke volume, increase cardiac output, increase blood pressure. There's something called, well, actually, let's look at contractility, because that's next, right? Contractility. Contractility. This is when that heart muscle contracts. And like I said, because of the Frank Starling mechanism, the more you stretch it and fill it, the stronger the contraction. But there's various drugs that can alter that contraction. There's also, again, the autonomic nervous system, sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system can play around with contractility. If you stimulate the sympathetic nervous system, you stimulate contractility, increasing stroke volume, increasing cardiac output, increasing blood pressure. All right, now the last point is that of afterload. Now afterload is the resistive pressures that this blood is facing when it gets ejected. So when this ventricle contracts and that blood goes to be ejected out of the aorta, there's going to be some resistive forces that it experiences. It could be the diameter of the blood vessel. There could be a blockage there. It could be whatever it may be. That's a resistance. So afterload is how much resistive forces does this ventricle need to overcome to pump that blood out? So if afterload is high, it's going to be harder for that blood to go out, which means that unlike these two, it has an opposing or negative effect on stroke volume. So decreased afterload will increase stroke volume. That means decreasing these resistive forces will increase how much blood goes out. So that's why decreasing afterload increases stroke volume. If I increase afterload, it means I'm making it harder. I'm putting a stop here, making it harder for that blood to get ejected. So stroke volume will go down if afterload goes up. So it has an opposing effect. All right? These are the various factors. At the end of the day, you can load them all together. You can have contractility as its own thing. And you can have preload and afterload together looking at volume. Simply the volume of the blood. Volume going in, volume going out. All right, we've looked at heart rate, stroke volume, contractility, volume generally, and now we're at systemic vascular resistance, also known as total peripheral resistance. What is this referring to? It is referring to the diameter of our blood vessels, basically. When you've got a blood vessel of a particular diameter, the blood that moves through doesn't just move through in a straight line like that. As the blood moves through, it encounters resistance from the walls of the vessel. Some degree of resistance as it moves through. That resistance is systemic vascular resistance. Now, if I were to dilate a blood vessel, so increase the diameter, I dilate the blood vessel. Think about what that means. As the blood moves through, it's less likely to touch the walls of the vessel. So it experiences less resistance. So dilation results in a decrease in resistance, so systemic vascular resistance. And if you decrease resistance, you decrease blood pressure, right? So if you want to drop blood pressure, what do you do? Dilate your blood vessels. Now you can't do that at will, unfortunately, but there are various ways that it can be done. What if you were to constrict your blood vessels? You narrow them, constrict. Well, it means that the blood is more likely to experience resistance from the walls of the vessels, and resistance goes up. 
If you increase systemic vascular resistance, you increase blood pressure. Now, what can happen here? Well, we know that the sympathetic nervous system, again, this naughty thing can come along and it can result in constriction. So the sympathetic nervous system, if you stimulate it at once, right? Stimulate the sympathetic nervous system, you get scared. Heart rate goes up, blood pressure goes up. Contractility goes up, blood pressure goes up. Systemic vascular resistance goes up, blood pressure goes up. The sympathetic nervous system has an extremely strong effect on increasing blood pressure. Really, really important. So what's the take home message? Well, a couple of things here, right? Take home message is this, any anti-hypertensive medication, so medication used to treat blood pressure, will either have its effect on the heart rate, on the contractility, on the volume of blood moving through the body, and on the diameter of our blood vessels. This is how all of our blood pressure medications work.